Welcome to the online clinic where we're going to talk about transition offense, specifically uh, R5 out attack that many people have called the two side break. I'm going to break down why we do it, what you need to do to run it well, uh, as well as how you can go ahead and practically install it with the team that you have. So this became really popular uh, a couple years ago with Chris Oliver, Basketball Immersion. They do a great job. He put a video out kind of showcasing the basic principle of the two side break and it was a lot of NBA teams and uh, while a lot of people loved it, I know a lot of feedback also was, well, I don't have James Harden on my team. Uh, so the goal of this clinic is to show you how Chris's idea can be applied and used with any normal team like the one I have and like the one you have. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Why the two side fast break? Well, the first reason why we made the switch is we wanted to run uh, in a way that was easy and practical. Uh, both after we got a stop defensively and after we were scored on. And so we used to just try to run and push the pace if we were able to get a stop. Um, but what we what we found is there was many possessions in the game that we were leaving out there uh, by electing not to run after getting scored on. And so there was many problems with, you know, how to do that. And, you know, the easiest one was, well, our five is almost always around the rim. And so if she can be the one that inbounds the ball, not only will that help us get the ball out faster, but it will also keep the paint open so that our point guard either has space to attack immediately uh, and get in there, or we can throw it up ahead and those players that catch the ball have an open paint to work with because the five is not rim running. Uh, additionally, playing fast allows us to beat the best teams that we have to play on our schedule. Uh, they're long, they're athletic, they're extremely talented. And when you play against them in the quarter court, that most of them switch everything. And it's just kind of hard to run what you want to run in the half court and grind it out versus a team that has a lot of length. And so we felt like if we could make the game a 94-foot game and if we could make our attack span 94 feet, uh, we would negate some of that athleticism and size by making it defend more space. Thirdly, uh, the two-side break fits in with our profile offensively in regard to how we want to shoot the shots we want to shoot and just our desire to be efficient. It's no secret that most teams are a lot more effective in transition from an efficiency standpoint. Uh, than they are in the half court. Our team this past year, 2021, we had the most efficient half court offense in all of Division II women's basketball at 0.9 points per possession. So we were still underneath one, although that was very good. Um, and, you know, there was really only about 10 teams that were even in, in, in the 0.9 and up range. Uh, but there were 40 teams in Division II women's basketball that had a point per possession of 0.99 or higher in transition. And so there was 40 teams that were better in transition than the best team in the half court uh, in Division II women's basketball. And I'm sure that would hold true in your league as well. Uh, and then finally, I had mentioned earlier, we wanted to keep the paint open for our point guard to attack. Um, that way we would have an opportunity to let one of our best players kind of play make for other people, regardless of what happened on the defensive end. So what is the two side break? If you're not familiar with it, I'll break it down and, and hopefully inspire you to put it in through this clinic. Essentially what it is, is you have an open paint, so the five is trailing. The ball normally comes up a side of the floor, uh, although for us, because our five trails, we like the ball to come up the middle of the floor and then work out. Uh, and then perimeter players just go ahead and space. And so you have the ball side, which has one guard, and then you have the two side, hence the name of the two side break, where there's two guards spacing the floor. Uh, and the benefit of this is, again, I've mentioned it probably twice now already, that open paint allows for early dribble penetration which is huge, especially if you have a talented point guard or you can throw it up and that player has some room to attack. Um, but it's also really effective because it works opposite of traditional transition defense. So most teams are having their first two players get back into the paint and they're going to be in some sort of a stack or a tandem and they're going to guard the hoop first. Well, when the ball is here, if someone has the ball, there's two defenders where my mouse is here in the weak side. They're guarding these guys here. And a skip pass for us creates either a long closeout or if the top one takes the ball and we skip it, now the bottom player has a two-on-one over here. Uh, and we're able to go ahead and either create a long closeout advantage or a numbers advantage very early in transition just by throwing the ball opposite of, of, of the side that it started on. So I'll break it down some of that here in a minute as well. Here's just some basic film of it just so you can see. All right, so here you can see us getting to space. This is our point guard with the ball. Again, I told you she works in the middle third out. This is our five-man trailing. Her rule is just to be the last one across half court. And then you have your two side declared here, boom and boom, and then your ball side or single side. Here's a really good example to where uh, these, these teams are recovering back and narrow. They have either three people above the three-point line, one player back. Um, 
and this girl here where my mouse is, she had the ball, and now what we have is a two-on-one with this girl left to guard uh, and kind of pick and choose. So she declares the ball, we transfer the advantage, and we get an open three six seconds into our possession just out of transition. Here's the same idea, this time after a made shot. Again, we have our two sides set and declared here. And again, look at how narrow, again, most teams in transition run back narrow. So you have four people playing in, playing in the middle third of the floor. One girl running with her check here, so you're going to have an advantage. Our point guard sees that. She moves the ball. And now, you know, these two both are getting ready to guard her, which creates a one more uh, pass going down. And again, we have a three that we can take with a lot of space right over a defender who's just short because she had a long closeout. All right, additionally, if you don't get that numbers advantage because teams are recovering narrow, uh, you're going to see teams that start to guard you like these guys have us here where they're, where they're recovering extremely wide. They're saying we're not going to give you threes. Big part of their game plan for this game. That's great for our point guard because uh, either the girl guarding her, and that's going to be this girl here, is running back to get in front and you can just change direction and whip by her or the girl waiting for the trailers backpedaling and she's not hard to get around either. So here we just change direction and we're able to go ahead and get a layup uh, very, very easily because they're fanned out to go ahead and guard shooting. You'll see a similar idea right here. Alla to our point guard. All right, and this is also an example of just why it's really good to have the paint open because now you're playing, and, and, and the five trailing for that matter. The five's back here um, and you're, you're playing three on three in the half court here this is a lot of space uh, but again these guys are matched up we have a backpedaling defender versus our point guard hesitation she gets right by her and makes a bucket and then the final one here uh, again just how the point guard can, can be a playmaker for others as well and this is a really good example of our five too fives rule if she's even or behind the ball she just stays behind i'll get into that later but you can see her almost hesitate there to delay and let our point guard get downhill and again right here uh, this girl's matched up with her check. She's kind of getting back to the paint, kind of not, but a recovering defender. We change direction and get by. Help comes. Advantage transferred. And even right now, if we don't take this three, we've got the one up, and we have an open three there as well. So now that you know what the two-side fast break is, we'll go ahead and break down just the install process for how you can get your team to play this way. As you can see on the screen, there's really four main ways to do it. You're going to define roles. Uh, or, or kind of make positions, and that's an idea I got from Mike Neighbors from his uh, functionally fast offense. Establish spacing. Uh, you know, Liam Flynn, great coach, always says that you need to have spacing before an advantage. Um, we feel that way in transition. Teaching basic reads, another idea I got from Mike, Coach Neighbors rather, in his functionally fast system where you're just trying to almost guide the point guard's decision making and helping her know what to look for. Uh, and then finally developing some cues slash triggers for offensive flow so that if you can't score immediately in transition you have a means to keep the ball moving uh, to play from where players end up and not have to reset and never give the defense a break so we'll start by defining roles we have three of them you can see there pushers runners and trailer the pushers are going to be the, the girls that we would like to bring the ball across half court as much as possible it doesn't mean they're the only ones that can um, but when we go ahead and begin to install it just for spacing and role clarification, we do assign two people the role of pusher. For us this past year, that was our one and two, uh, and it, this allowed us to play two point guards. We, we do it a lot anyway, um, but it was nice to have you know multiple, multiple point guards on the floor, both knowing that they could get an outlet pass and make decisions and not feel like they're playing out of position just because they're playing with another point guard. So... I'll kind of walk you through some of the behaviors and rules for them, and then we'll come back to the runners. All right, so everything starts uh, with our pushers trying to get deep outlets above the elbow area. And so we call from the free throw line and down the no catch zone. In our practices, when we're installing this, if we get an outlet pass there, it's just an automatic turnover. We want to be getting uh, outlet passes up the floor. Now we want to make sure that both of our pushers are getting to spots where they can receive outlet passes and so the area just outside the three point line on the wing is going to be the outlet zone and our one, our primary pusher is going to work her way right out here to the right, zero here is our secondary pusher, she's going to work her way out here to the left 
and what you're going to end up seeing happen is we get a really deep outlet as a result. Now, these guys are interchangeable, and if you decide to with your team, you could have this girl go there and this girl go there because that's where they're at. We like clarity, and so we opt to send them to a specific spot. We end up doing that here. We get a really deep outlet, and that basically jump starts our transition. And again, you can see two side created, five trailing, point guard going to the bucket and getting a nice easy, easy layup uh, and putting some serious pressure on them. Same idea here. All right, this is our put one of our pushers, and this is the other pusher. Uh, this pusher just takes off and starts going down the floor. This girl, again, wants to get an outlet on the right side of the floor, starts working from the left to the right, and even though she doesn't catch it in her spot, her trying to get there kind of starts creating momentum uh, of her going forward, and we're able to get a deep outlet, which again is really helpful to jumpstart our transition. Perfect. This is an example too of really important that, that, that your pushers are good rebounders or that they at least make attempts to rebound. Um, so both our point guards led our team in rebounding. Uh, they were both one and two, so that was exceptional. Here you're going to see our secondary pusher whose role is to get to the left side of the floor, get a rebound. She just begins to push that thing. Our opposite pusher, so whichever pusher doesn't get the uh, outlet pass or the rebound, is just going to become the top player on the two side. So now as the ball is coming up this side of the floor, you have our primary pusher establishing the top guard at, on the two side and then our runner as the bottom guard on the two side, five trailing. And we're all set up to play. Again, paint is open. People are hugging their uh, defenders. And we're able to put our body on a, def a defender and make a pretty tough layup there. Uh, the only thing I haven't spoke of here is what do we do uh, whenever we get a stop? Uh, well, whenever we get a stop, it's going to be our primary pusher that brings the ball up the floor every time, and she's going to receive an outlet pass on the right side of the floor from our five every time. So here, if this ball went through the net, zero would just take off and become the top guard on the two side. Five here would just work her way up to get an outlet pass from 44, and we'd be all set. The second role, and probably what, uh, the most important one, for making your transition go is going to be the runners and they do exactly what their name suggests they are just finding the nearest sideline and they are sprinting to the corner as fast as they can uh, some things that we really think are important for these guys number one we want them to get wide first and then get deep second so we don't want them just sprinting through through the middle third we want them to get to the closest sideline and then start going now these guys are extremely interchangeable. Um, if they're both on the same side, that's fine. They both just stay on that side. One will stop in the corner, one will stop in the wing. Um, if one of them, let's say four, is ahead of three, four keeps going. If three is ahead of four, four keeps going. If four is on the right side and she wants to run to the right side, that's fine. If three is on the left side and she wants to run left, that's fine. These guys have freedom to find a sideline and go because one and two have discipline to find a specific sideline. And what that basically does is, is it makes sure that our spacing is what we want every single time as a result. Uh, the other thing that we're really trying to get our runners to do is to put their head down and sprint until they cross half court and only when they cross half court flip their head back and look for the ball. Now that's not perfect. That doesn't always happen that way. But that certainly is a goal that we are trying to get them to achieve. And then the third one, um, so far I think every clip that I've showed you, we've shot three. That certainly isn't always the case. We want to shoot layups in this transition. Um, and their, their big read there is when they're running, if they get behind the defense, so they're running wide, they're running to the corner, but if there's no defender back between them and the rim, we want them to break in and go to the basket because they're behind the defense. So we'll take a look at some of those clips here. All right, again, talked about point guard being a really good rebounder. She grabs this one and she begins pushing the ball. Uh, you have your one runner getting up the sideline, another runner getting up the sideline here, heads down sprinting, and then obviously your opposite pusher uh, becoming the top guard on the two side. As a result, we're able to make a nice advance pass, ball never stops, and we're able to get a big advantage three just from sprinting and just from our, just from our pace. All right, this is a good example of what we do after a made basket. So again, our five man number 44 takes the ball out. Our primary pusher starts to kind of get on the move to get a deep outlet pass, which is fine. Uh, and then over here, of course, you have your two side declared. All right, now here, um, this is different for us as well. 24 is our other pusher. 
and after a made basket, like normally we want the pusher just to keep going if there's nobody in front of them and the opposite runner can take her spot. After a make, we try to be a little more organized and have our pushers exactly where we want them, but that's for later on. Here's a really good example of just getting behind the defense to where she's running, she flips her head, point guard sees it and zips the ball up there, and we're able to go ahead and shoot a layup in transition in three seconds right after our opponent scored. Same idea here. Scoring at the rim because of our runners. And again, you can see just these guys, like watch number 13 here. Ball goes through, head down, sprinting, then flips back and looks. Really good job. Good early and opposite pass. And we're just off running, attacking uh, with that paint wide open. And then the final, the final spot is the trailer. That's normally our five man. And again, you guys can assign any positions you want to these. We like, and the idea that Coach Neighbors gave with his functionally fast offense is... Whenever you change the name of their position, you control the narrative in regard to what that position does. And that's especially important for the five. I think a lot of times people hear five and think, oh, I stink. Like I'm just the player that they're gonna stick underneath the basket. And so if you can give them a different name and that different name have different meaning than just somebody you're trying to hide, I think that's really important for the player. Um, and so our trailer is going to take the ball out after makes, we've talked about that. Uh, but after a miss shot, they're going to read the play. And if they take the ball out or if they're behind the basketball after a miss, they're just going to trail to the top of the key and be patient there. Um, so if five gets a rebound after a miss and outlets it, or if you know five is fighting for a rebound and maybe it goes long and a guard gets it and starts to push it and the five is clearly behind the ball, we want her to stop, to, we want her to delay, we want her to be the last person to cross half court and just kind of chill here at the top of the key. Uh, but let's say that our five is guarding, you know, we switch pick and roll and she's guarding a, a perimeter player and, you know, her player doesn't shoot it, but there's a shot at the rim and our five is at the top of the key and the rebound under, is underneath the rim. We want our five just to, you know, go breakneck speed, run to the rim and then get opposite the ball. So we'll show you a little bit of both. All right, so here our five grabs the rebound. Again, not in love with that outlet. We get it in the no catch zone. That would be a turnover in practice. But five is behind the play. She stays behind the play. And as a result, we're able to go ahead and get the ball to her because the defense loaded up and took away transition. Get a quick little handoff action. And we're right into our half court flow offense. All right. Similarly, it's going to be number 20 here. All right. Rebound got. She's ahead of the ball. So she's going to put her head down and sprint the floor trying to get to the rim. She takes a minute here to get moving, but eventually she starts going. Able to get a pass off the rim run, transfers the advantage, inside out three, balls flying, fun way to play. And then again here, after a make, five take the ball out. Point guard work to get a deep outlet, and then five is just going to go ahead and trail at the top of the key. Uh, and again, that's really important because it lets our point guard, even after getting scored, even when we don't have an advantage here, right? We're playing four on five right now. Um, but space is also an advantage and so because we're able to go ahead and get into the paint because it's open and clear that draws you know three defenders flattened out here inside out three big advantage over a short closeout we're really happy with that and that's an advantage we got even though we didn't have numbers it was four on five so just a really good example of why this break is effective even if there's not a numerical advantage because of the space all right so let's talk about the basic reads here uh, there's four main advantages that we're trying to create in transition and we want them to happen because we're just playing fast. Uh, and I'll talk about some parameters that we give our team in regard to how to measure and encourage playing fast beyond just saying it a little later on. Uh, but those four advantages are really simple. The first one's getting behind the defense, and that's simply for our runners or for the five when she's ahead of the ball to run so hard that there's nobody left between you and the rim, and we can just throw you the ball and you can shoot a layup. Uh, numerical is anytime we have a numbers advantage. So it could be a two on one on the two side, like a clip I showed earlier. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, three on four, five on four, whatever you call it. When we have one more player and we can make an extra pass to get an open shot, that's an advantage we want to create with our pace. Space is huge. That's probably the biggest advantage um, that, that you're going to create with the two side. You even saw that it was an advantage in that last clip, even though we didn't have numbers. Really important to give space to your players. And then cross matches. Hopefully we're running so hard that the defense can't be picky in regard to who guards who. And they just have to take the closest player. Uh, when that's the case, we don't do anything specific to target matchups besides keep the ball moving. 
knowing that it will all come out in the wash and will eventually find the worst defender and be able to attack them. So I'll show you a couple examples here of those advantages. The very first one is just getting behind the defense after a made shot. We're able to go ahead, sprint the length of the floor. Uh, and again here, this is an example of width first, depth second. Number three finds her sideline. She's out of frame now sprinting it. The minute she sees that she's behind the defense and that's number two, she breaks in and we're able to go ahead and get a layup within two seconds of the possession. Another example here. All right, we go ahead and get an outlet pass, and now it's going to be this runner here on, on the side closest to us that we're trying to look at. So 13 sees here that she can get behind the defense, and she breaks in. She just needs to keep cutting hard and let the ball find her. She slows down waiting on the ball, and that bails her out. Now, this cut is helpful because it pulls this defender over, uh, and that's what allows number 11 to get behind the defense here and go ahead and get hers. So if these guys don't get the ball, it's important that they respace early. Like 13 here was a little slow. We'd like her getting back out to the three-point line, so if this girl does help, 11 can find 13. If she helps, 13 can find four, and that ball just never stops. One more here or so of us getting behind the defense. Again, five gets the rebound, outlets it to our point guard. Runner's able to get behind the D, and we're taking a layup early. And again, this probably happens two to three times a game because our pace is consistent and you're just wearing people down. Um, so you're going to see this here. This is actually in the first quarter of the game, I believe, one of our, our very first basket. Um, when we were struggling offensively to score, this is against a really good defensive team with a lot of length. We're getting it in transition, and that's exactly how we want to have it. All right, the second one we'll go ahead and talk about is the numerical advantage. And again, I just mentioned that's anytime we have one extra player than the defense has back. So we'll take a look at a few of those. All right, so here, five, number 20. She's ahead of the ball, so she rim runs. She's big in creating the advantage here. 13, head down and going. All right, number three here has a chance to go uh, to the rim because she's behind the defense, but we opt not to do it, so she bounces out and respaces. And this is really important now because five on her rim run takes this defender with her, and that really helps create this two-on-one -on, on the weak side. So you have number three in the corner, number 13 on the wing, number two here in blue left to guard both. She can't do it. That skip to the two side creates an open three-point shot at a critical moment in a playoff game. And again, this is an, this is an example of where the defense has more, more people back than we have. This is a five-on-four defensive advantage here. Uh, but because there's two on the ball, we have our two-on-one here on the weak side. So we go ahead and move it. And right now, she has to play both transfer the ball and again we're making a play on that two-person side another one here really good example of how this works against traditional transition defense four sprints back here to the paint versus getting matched and that leaves this girl to take the ball and we have a two-on-one here on the weak side zero just goes ahead moves the advantage and we're able to go ahead and get a three really simple stuff um, but shots that we love Space, huge advantage, keeping that paint open so the point guard can get in there and attack, or when we throw the ball to somebody else, they can go ahead, break the paint as well, and just keep making plays for each other. So five gets the rebound, outlets the ball. Really good example here of space to where we advance the ball to the, to the top guard on the two side. And again, right here, the defense has enough people back. One, two, three people back. One, two, three blues ahead. Ahead. We're playing three on three here from half court in. It's a crap ton of space, and we're able to go ahead and make a play. Space is an advantage. We've talked a ton about our point guard just keeping the ball. Here's an example of where we're jogging it. This is poor pace from us. Um, we're hopefully trying to kill clock if we're playing this slow. But again, here, we have nothing in transition, but we do have an open paint. We have a wiggly little point guard here who can just get her shoulders by somebody and go ahead and make a play at the rim. Very happy with that possession. Same thing here. After I made bucket, much better pace this time. And again, this is probably what we're going for more of to where we're getting a really deep outlet catch. We're getting it on the move. Uh, much, much, much more of what we're going for there. Uh, but again, we do not have a numbers advantage. One, two, three, four, five people back, but the paint is open and we're able to go ahead and make a play get to the rim and score. So space is an advantage even when the numbers aren't in your favor because the defense isn't set.
Last one we'll watch here. And again, we're playing four on five. We're getting fouls drawn just because we're playing fast. Uh, and critical, you know, just critical baskets in, in big games here against the best teams in our league that we're able to go ahead and, and make because of our pace. Uh, and then cross matches, that's a really big one for us. Again, hopefully the pace that we're playing at puts so much stress on the defense that they just have to guard whoever's closest. So here, flying down the floor, five runs to the rim. Uh, just the nature of how the ball's moving right now, it's going so fast that their point guard here is on our five, and their five is going to end up on our point guard. Ball starts to move, no one's holding it, and we're just playing here making the five guard in multiple planes at multiple speeds, and we're able to go ahead and get a bucket. And again here, I don't understand how that's not a foul when she's riding her all the way to the rim. Um, but people swallow their whistles late in the year, I suppose. A couple more that we'll go ahead and get into uh, with cross matches. So here it's going to be number 11, our guard, being guarded by their five. Uh, and again here, our five, just you can see right here happening. First girl back is matching people up because we're coming so fast. They have just to settle. She tells this girl to take hers. Uh, and as a result, their five is on the perimeter, which we're fine with. Bigs on the perimeter can't help themselves but overhelp. Death taxes, bigs overhelping. Happens nonstop. She turns and stares at the ball. We, re we are able to relocate. Inside out three, big advantage shot over a short close out. Very happy with that. And again, that's a advantage created just because ball never stops and we're able to get a cross match in transition. All right, last one here. Um, again, pace is going, defense is back, but you can see these guys pointing, talking, scrambling. They're going to be mismatched. She has to take this one. She's got to take this one. That leaves this girl supposed to be guarding number 11, um, and that puts her on number zero, who's a really fast point guard for us. So ball gets caught by her. She starts backing up to protect her feet because this girl's super fast and we just take a three as a result again everything comes out in the wash we just want to keep that ball moving and we'll make a play no matter who we have on us all right so now that we kind of have an idea of the advantages that we're looking for how do you get your point guard your ball handler to look for them in what order does it happen and how do you make it happen in a way that's organized uh, to where there's you know freedom to make whatever play they want but still coordination so that no one's surprising each other with the play that's made Number one, we want our pusher to be a really early mover of the ball. So we would prefer to not cross half court with a pass. I'm sorry, with a dribble. We would prefer to pass the ball across half court. Uh, and what we're doing in order to make that happen, as you can see here, we have the decision zone kind of mapped out. And that's basically, there's volleyball lines on a basketball court. And I don't know what they're called. I think maybe the 10-foot line. Um, but in that space between the volleyball lines, we want our point guard looking to pass the ball first and foremost. And so the very first place they're looking is to go early and opposite. So two here, our, our opposite pusher, our, our top guard on the two side, we don't want her getting to the wing too fast. We want her to stop and delay to be available for this skip pass uh, pretty early in the possession because we might have a two-on-one here. That's what one's looking for. She's looking for where's the biggest advantage. If she sees one defender back and people off, we want to move the ball there. Um, if there's two defenders back and there's you know one between her and three, we want to go up the sideline. Um, and if there's three people back and somebody just kind of backpedaling for the point guard, we want her to go ahead and just attack off the bounce. Um, and if nothing else works out there, we can always just hit our five, and our five will trigger some action pretty easily to get us back into the, our, our dribble drive offense in the quarter court. Additionally, I referred to the no catch zone. I just have that shown here for you. So you can see that we want to get our outlet passes above the elbows if possible, as often as possible. All right, so here's a good example of what I'm talking about. Volleyball line, volleyball line. This is our decision zone. This is where we want our point guard making reads to get rid of the ball. You can see here the first place her eyes go is early and opposite. Can I move the ball to an open player there? Even if there's not a clear advantage, just this skip of the ball is really helpful in making sure that you're moving the defense from help to ball side. Uh, and you're basically creating two closeouts really early on in the possession. And again, we have, even if we don't take the shot at the rim, Big advantage here, she's probably taking that one up, and we just got that defense running um, very early on in the possession. Similar idea here. All right, point guard gets into, into this decision zone. Reading, where's the advantage? Sees an unguarded player, moves the ball, able to get a wide open three. 
Right, this one happens really quick. Decision zone, two side, one down. Boom, two closeouts created, able to go ahead and take a three versus a short closeout. All right, now we'll talk about going up the side. All right, again, deep outlet, we like it. We get into this little zone here, looking opposite, but you're gonna have people, and good golly, can this pause with clarity. These guys are matched up already, so no advantage on the two side. Point guard is seeing that all the way back here. Um, but what she is seeing is that the girl that she just threw the ball to, her defender right here, long closeout, big advantage. And that's always what we're trying to go is where's the advantage in transition? How can I move the ball to find the advantage? Is it early and opposite? No. Is it up the sideline? Okay, I'll go ahead and find it that way. Similar idea right here. We win the ball back. Deep outlet. Pushing it here and again. Sometimes this is helpful as well when there's just no two side created. So right here, a runner got the rebound. And we'll talk about this here in a little bit in regard to keeping space. But if a runner gets a rebound and outlets the ball to a pusher, we want her to stay behind the ball. She doesn't have to run to the other side of the floor. Just get to the nearest sideline, keep running, and you'll just become a trailer. Not a problem. Uh, but again, here, you can see one, one player back. No one takes the ball. Boom. Move the advantage. Long closeout. Wide open three. Really good example here as well. And again, this is the middle of the year. We're a little more interchangeable. Uh, this is a runner that gets the rebound and starts to push it. Our pusher just gets to her side and runs. If there's no one ahead of her, she'll just keep going to the corner. Boom. Decision zone, open player, long closeout. We move that puppy. She's able to drive and draw two. We get it right back, and we take an open three. Absolutely love it. And then, of course, uh, if the defense is back and if no one's in the paint, which you'll see here, they're all fanned out. Big, wide open paint. She reads that there's nowhere to go with the ball, so she's just trying to set up her chance to go ahead, get downhill, and make a bucket. Similar idea right here. Perfect. Again, coming back, these guys are fanned out. No clear advantage. She's behind the ball, so we don't want to throw it backwards. But their five-man backpedaling will attack that and get in the paint any day. Really, really good chance for our point guard to go ahead and get downhill. Uh, and then the final read, of course, if nothing is happening, if transition's kind of stalled, if the defense does a really good job taking everybody away, which they do here, just find the five, play through her. She'll get into some quick action that flows right back into our dribble drive offense, and we go from five out to four out without having to have any kind of a pause. Same idea right here trying to get in the paint and just go score. Their fives all the way back, gumming things up. So we go ahead and find our five. Now this is a time that she can shoot the ball if she'd like to. Uh, if not, we get right into a pick and roll. Poor quality here. We refuse it regardless and we're able to drive the thing and go score. So you have a good idea of our positions, our roles, uh, the reads we're trying to make, the advantages we're trying to create. You know, now we're going to talk about spacing, uh, just to make sure that if we don't get any of those things early on, we're able to go ahead and keep the ball moving to keep playing and to still create advantages in transition with our pace, even if the shot clock keeps going a little bit. We just don't want the ball to ever stop. So uh, after a miss, again, I've talked about we want to go with first, depth second. It's not important to play fast if we don't have any spacing. We want to find the nearest sideline. We want to hold our space. If that means there's two runners and a pusher on the same side of the floor, that's fine. Uh, a three side is, is not a problem. I'll show some clips of that. Uh, if there's a runner that outlets the ball to a pusher, just stay on that side and trail. Not a problem at all. Um, of course, you have five making her reads as well. Uh, and there's a lot of freedom after a missed shot, provided we still have spacing. However, after a make, we want to we run to, to preset spots. You know, our, our three is going right corner, our four is going left corner, our two is going left wing, our one is going right wing, our five is trailing. Um, and we want to still play fast, so we still have the same, same reads. You know, can I go early and opposite? Can I go up the sideline? Can I get into the paint? But the difference is if we find the five after getting scored on, we're going to run preset actions to where if the five dribbles at this player, it's this action. If the five passes and screens away, it's this action. Um, and that allows us to get specific players into specific action without having to stop uh, even after we get scored on. So we'll break all that down here in a minute. 
All right, so this is gonna be an example here of a trail three. So basically what you're gonna end up seeing here is our one pusher gets a rebound and outlets it to another pusher. Five goes ram, both runners end up on the same sideline, not a problem. This pusher here is still running to her correct spot. So I talked about how the runners can have freedom because the pushers have discipline and that helps our spacing, that's fine. She's gonna say, okay, three's in my spot, so I'll just go ahead and go one spot over. We're able to get a trail three as a result. Uh, and again, there's a lot of flexibility, there's a lot of good spacing that can occur, even if people aren't in the perfect spot. So that's a really good example of that right there. Again, here we get a stop, a runner gets an outlet pass and goes to the, to the, uh, to the pusher, fives ahead of the ball, so she goes to the rim. And again, here, the runner just finds the closest sideline, says, okay, there's already two people there, so I'll just kind of work my way over to the next spot. And as a result, she gets a trail three. Really good action, really good inside out happens often. All right, again here, um, both runners end up on the same sideline, not a problem. They just go ahead and hold their space, one to the corner, one to the wing, and then the opposite pusher just goes ahead and creates space at the top of the key. We go opposite after a little paint catch, ball's moving, and we're able to go ahead and keep playing. Uh, and again, spacing always resets itself in our half court offense as well. You know, you can see zero here. She kicks it and she's getting ready to cut through because um, that's what we do in our offense. And it just never stops. It's, it's one attack that goes for 94 feet. Really good action for us there. Final one I'll go ahead and show you here once we get the ball back is again a three side created. Both runners end up on the same sideline. Pusher right here, not, not a worry. Still space to go ahead and attack inside out. We'll take that three every time. So uh, a three side is not the end of the world. Sometimes it's, it's, it's a feature, it's, it's a benefit even. So just ride that spacing out, hold the closest sideline, not a problem. All right, and again, talked about triggers for our five. Um, after a make especially, but this matters after a miss as well, how do we just establish flow and keep the play going? Um, so we can go from five out to four out. Big idea for the five after a miss is that she stays high and patient and just waits for the ball to come to her so she can go ahead and ball screen after she passes it. Uh, if our five trails and our pusher gets into the paint and kicks the ball out on that pass out, the five will dive. Um, of course, I mentioned after a made shot, if we hit the five with a lateral pass because there's no advantage, there's set actions that we're looking to run. I'll just go ahead and break some of those things down here. So already seen this clip, but this is just a really good example of our five being patient. She trails the play. Boom, ball finds her, and right now she can pass and ball screen or dribble handoff with any player she likes to. No matter what phase of offense we're in, when our five gets the ball above the free throw line, if she doesn't shoot it or attack a, attack a closeout, she wants to go ahead and create action with anybody on either side. So here she just elects to go ahead and dribble pitch, and boom, she's low. We're playing uh, in, in our normal half court offense. This is a really good example of it here. Five's gonna trail after a made shot. Point guard tries to get in, kicks the ball out. Ball gets swung up to our five. Five moves it over. Would like this player to, to attack this closeout here. This is a missed opportunity for us. Um, but again, five just trying to create action, make something happen here with a little bit of a rub screen. Again, three doesn't do a great job using it, but the flow never stops. We've got a lot of options. If we don't score this layup here, we're gonna have this open window pass back to 13 as well because we're flattening out the defense. So a really good example of that there. Really like this one. This is a great clip here for us. Four is playing the five for us right now. Outlets the ball, just moving the advantage. And again here, five trails and stays patient. Ball finds her. And again, she either can shoot it or attack a closeout, or she can move that thing one more time and go ball screen. She attacks the closeout and we're able to go ahead and get an and one. And again, we score there with 19 seconds left on the shot clock, so it's an 11 second possession. But I would still call that transition because the ball never stopped. All right, here's a good example. A common cue as well when our five is trailing for when we want them the ball screen is when the ball is taken from the baseline and passed back out to the wing. Boom, that's normally a time where she'll just go ahead and follow it. But again, your five has to read here and always be thinking like, okay, does, do, does she need space or help? You know, do we have an advantage or not? And we want five to be really demonstrative, really declarative to where you can see her here, put a fist in the air, she's calling for a ball screen, and we just go ahead and set that thing. And again, we're able to go ahead and create some action without having to stop 
There's no pulling the ball out. There's no calling a play. We're just playing one way for 94 feet. Another good example. This time it's going to be after a make. Boom. This is perfect. So we go early and opposite here after a made shot. Nothing happens. No problem. Five's just thinking, how can I go ahead and create some action? Follows with the ball screen. Boom. That makes the first domino fall. And from there, we're just going and we're just playing. All right, again, still trying to play fast. Not just saying, okay, we're going to throw it to the five here. Uh, but you can see five's rule. Ball gets in the paint and kicked out opposite. She dives anytime that happens. She starts to dive either to offensive rebound or we want to create a gap here for 24 to drive this thing. Uh, so five is going to empty out to the same side she passed to. If she dives right here, that creates a double gap for 24 to get middle, um, but she likes to shoot it, which is completely fine. So by design, all the rules here are created to kind of create space throughout the possession. Same idea here, five trails. We get in the paint and kick it out. On that kick out, five begins to dive, either creating a driving gap or getting her in where she can offensive rebound. All right, and then this is gonna be just an example of if we have bad pace, if nothing's going on, we have options where we can throw the ball to the five. And based on what she does, it triggers a certain action. So here it's a little dribble handoff. We shoot behind this a ton, um, but she just likes to roll to the rim and we're right back into our dribble drive offense here where the ball is just moving, we're attacking closeouts, and we're making plays at the rim. Another example of it here, no transition, we find the five, dribble handoff, and from there we're just playing, getting downhill. This is really good pace in the quarter court. Definitely happy with this possession here. Um, and again, you can just see our players are always trying to make space for each other here in any avenue, any way, to where, you know, number one, like three's cut here opens up a gap for 23 to drive 23 pitches this thing to 24 and she's got space because five rolled uh, 11 here sees her defender getting close so she pushes away and we're just constantly making space for one another playing together reading even though it's a drill based attack really good job by our girls there all right so some drills to install the two side fast break i'll try to go pretty quick here um, the very first one is there's just things that you can do to emphasize playing fast uh, without even needing a drill. So I mentioned earlier, it's a, a turnover for us in practice if we get an outlet below the free throw line or if we're running back to the basketball. So you can kind of gauge that as a coach. Uh, additionally, we want to make sure the ball crosses half court before the shot clock reads 27. That way there's just pace getting into everything that we do. In addition to that, of course, there are specific drills that we do um, to go ahead and teach this transition. Uh, and while there's more than just these three, these are the three that I'll like to show. Uh, we like to follow the TLC method, teaching drills, learning drills, and then competing drills, uh, just to make sure that the girls' learning is getting deeply embedded and they can do it automatically. So very first one, just 5 on a flow transition. You'll see our players are jogging in a circle around the paint. The coach tosses the ball up and calls a name. That player has to take it. And from there, they have to figure out, based on where they're at, how to organize and get into our transition. Sorry, let me go ahead and fast forward through the slide here. All right, so you can see us here, we're jogging, boom. Opposite pusher gets the ball, fives ahead, so she runs to the rim. And we're gonna go ahead and create a two side with the other pusher on the right, single side over here. Uh, and from here, we're just trying to score really quick. So you'll just see us take the first basket we can. Perfect, now we go ahead and we're gonna be running transition offense after a make. So that just triggers us to go ahead uh, and play with our set spacing. Players in their perfect spots, not a problem and then five here reading, okay, ball's coming up from the baseline to the wing, I'll follow right there and ball screen, and pretty seamless, we're scoring. I th we probably told them they need to throw a couple passes, so they're getting into our half-court offense here, um, and again, we're just able to score pretty quick off that drill. Next team comes out in a circle, ball goes to a new player, perfect, and again, they have to figure out spacing as a result of where they're out on the floor and just be solving problems. Uh, this is a pretty ugly possession here. This is early on. I just cringe even watching that. Um, but we're learning, we're getting better, not a problem. And again, preset spacing here. We get in, kick the ball out, five dives, creates a gap. All the things that we've talked about, and we're just flowing, getting right into our offense here. So really good job by our girls here. Um, and that's just kind of how we teach every one of our reads, five on no first, but we like that circle start so they're playing different spots. All right, colors drill, really simple. I'll just fast forward through this and talk you through it. You've seen this before where you're gonna go ahead and line everybody up on the free throw line and baseline. 
um, <clears throat> we put our we put everybody in the right spots here. So there's there's no thinking now. This is designed to train the reads for our pushers. So we'll always the coach will always give the ball to either pusher. The five is trailing here. You have your three and four. Your runners sprinting here, uh, and then whichever player's name we call just touches the baseline and then recovers. So you're creating an advantage situation no matter what here, and it's our point guard's job to try to find it. So here we have our two on one ball side. We go ahead and move the ball. Help comes. Ball's flying around. We're just using the advantage. And you can play for multiple trips to where White gets the rebound and goes. I think here we just reset it because we want to talk about it. Um, ideally, we'd always give the ball to our pusher. We don't here, and that's okay. Um, but again, you're looking for your two-on-one. Okay, they do a good job of taking away transition because we're dinking around. Ball finds the five. She moves it. Ball screens. And without any kind of a pause, we're right back into our half-court offense. Uh, very lousy shot there, but we'll live with it. So that's our colors drill. And then finally, this is our competing drill. It's the 100 game we took from Arkansas and Coach Neighbors. Uh, it's a normal five on five game. We start with a circle start here to where we call a team's number out. They have just to go ahead and rebound the ball. Um, and from there, we're playing a live game where you can shoot whenever you want. There's no real rules, reads, whatever. Um, but the amount of points you get for a shot like if we make this three, which we do, it's going to be worth 22 points because that's how much time is left on the shot clock. So uh, it's a good drill to encourage the pace to be at what you want it to be. You play to 100 with getting the points of whatever's on the shot clock whenever the shot's taken. You'll need to have a coach on the sideline dictating what those are worth, um, but you're just playing the entire time. Now, there's going to be some bad shots taken in this, and there's going to be some good shots taken in this, um, but regardless, you just want to, you want to be playing with a fast pace the entire way. Again here, push and pace, where's the advantage? 26 point shot right there. Uh, and again, this just keeps going. And it's important that the girls will get better at creating advantages at speed and taking good shots early versus just trying to shoot quick. So here, this blue team just keeps taking some tough ones because um, they're not getting as much out of their transition. But this is a really good way to kind of jump start to get everything going, to play really fast. Boom, we play through the five. Quick action right there. Uh, and we're off and running. And you can, you know, we play a couple games of this sometimes. Sometimes one, sometimes two, 18-pointer right there. Um, but again, really good way to establish the pace that you want to have in your practices. Um, so obviously, if there's any questions, reach out to me. My email is j.leonza1 at gmail.com or my cell number, text me 717-602-2764. Would love to talk with you. I recently put out the ultimate guide to transition offense, and that is everything I just talked about in more detail, more game film, more explanation, more drills, PDF to walk you through everything. That's available on leonzobasketball.com if you want to check that out. Um, otherwise, if there's anything I can do to help you, please let me know, and I'm willing, willing to talk hoops any, anywhere, anytime. I'm here to help. Take care.